Hello, my name is Nicola Toni and I'm the leader of the lab of adult neurogenesis at the University of Lausanne, Switzerland. Hello, my name is Sébastien Sultan, I'm research associate. So we are studying adult neurogenesis, a process by which new neurons are constantly added in the adult brain. In particular, the hippocampus, a structure involved in mechanism of learning and memory, attracted our attention. Now these cells seem to participate to functions such as spatial navigation and memory, or fine discrimination between similar events. So they are very important for normal brain function. To become fully mature, a neuron has to face several challenges and one of the most crucial of them is making synapses with other neurons of the adult brain. Curiously, the first synapses formed by new neurons are immature and unable to receive signals from other cells. We call them silent. Their transformation into active synapses enable newly formed neurons to finish their development and participate to hippocampal function. The question we're asking here is how do newborn neurons make synapses in the adult brain? And if they do so, do they get the help of other cell types? So we're particularly interested by astrocytes. Astrocytes is the other cell type of the brain. So the question we're asking here really is, can astrocytes release molecules that would help newborn neurons make synapses with other neurons in the adult hippocampus? We use a transgenic mouse in which vesicular release from astrocytes can be controlled during specific time in the development of an identified group of new neurons. In this mouth, transgenic astrocytes also express a green fluorescent protein as a reporter gene. By using TF microscopy and astrocytic culture, we made sure that this construct, when activated in astrocytes, will disable their release of vesicles. When these mice were adult, new neurons were identified by infecting them with a virus expressing a red fluorescent protein in neurons born shortly after the viral injection. So what we found is that when vesicular release is blocked, new neurons form less synapses and start dying. Upon closer examination, we found that not all astrocytes express the transgene. In fact, about half of them did, and the other half were normal. When new neurons grew, they cross the territories of both types of astrocyte. To our surprise, the formation of synapses was impaired only when the dendrite of new neuron crossed the territory of blocked astrocyte, suggesting that each astrocyte locally controls the formation of synapses on new neurons. Deserine is known to be produced by astrocyte, and when we measured the amount of deserine in the medium in which astrocytes were grown, we found that astrocytes with impaired vesicular release produced less deserine. To confirm this finding, we measured the amount of deserine in the hippocampus of transgenic mice and indeed we found less deserine than in well-type normal mice. So we recorded new neurons in mice with impaired astrocytic vesicular release, recorded the activity of an MDA receptor and found that it could be partially restored by bas application of deserine indeed confirming that the absence of deserine in transgenic mice impaired the synaptic development of new neurons. Since deserine closed the blood-brain barrier, we decided to inject transgenic mice with deserine for 8 consecutive days. With this treatment, we could restore the concentration of deserine in the hippocampus to normal level, but most importantly, we could restore the synaptic maturation and survival of newborn neurons. Our results suggest that deserine released by astrocyte enables the formation of synapses on adult born neuron and the survival into the adult dentigerous. If you consider that astrocytic vesicular release is controlled by neuronal activity itself, then this is a nice mechanism by which neuronal activity can actually interfere and enhance the synaptic integration of newborn neurons at places in the network where more computational power is needed. Also, this shows that neurons do not integrate into the network by themselves. They need help from other cells. And this is interesting for therapeutic perspectives because this means that those mechanisms, those molecules, can be enhanced or targeted for therapeutic approaches, for example, for age-related cognitive loss or Alzheimer's disease. 